This is from Luke 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give you will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be holy, and he will be the Son of God. And now... Your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this, and this in the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Pete. Your people continuing to prepare ourselves to receive your gift. So we pray that we might have an open heart and an open mind this morning, that you will give your gift of Christ to us and we will receive it and our lives will be made different and more complete. We pray these things in your name. Amen. So we did something a little bit new this year. We had a longest night service on December 21st, which was Thursday this year. And that is the, uh, the night with the most um, nighttime hours out of the year. It's the, the longest night. And we invited people to come who maybe are in a time of, of darkness in their own life to remember that the light comes for them too. Christmas is not just, or not even really, about a perfect life. It's about God coming to us in our very real lives. Uh, so it was a really wonderful service, and I appreciate the people who came and musicians who made that happen, and good to read the Christmas story in a different light, so to speak. As we were preparing for that service, Jen and I were talking uh, about Mary. We just kind of got to the topic of Mary, the mother of God. And um, we realized that in the Protestant church, we don't talk about Mary all that much. She is honored and revered in the Catholic church. But I think Mary is the baby that got thrown out with the bathwater during the Protestant Reformation. And uh, we forget who she is and um, why she is important to our story of faith and to our life of faith. And so this morning, I think we get to, to talk about Mary and remember that she was really the one who bore Christ to the world. She was the God-bearer, and in some ways, the very first disciple. So we remember the story of the angel coming to visit Mary, and he brings her kind of an impossible task, that she is going to bear for the world this son, and he will be called the son of the Most High. And he will reign on this throne and his kingdom will have no end. And people will call him the son of God. Now, if you have been a parent, you know that being a parent to anybody is kind of an impossible task. <laughs> it is hard work. Uh, but try being a parent to the son of the God Most High who will reign over a kingdom forever and ever. What are you supposed to do with that? And to make matters more complicated, Mary says to the angel, how is this going to be because I'm a virgin? And so the angel says, don't worry about it. God is going to come over you and this child will be holy. This will be a holy gift to all the world. And you might remember Elizabeth. Remember your cousin Elizabeth? People thought that she couldn't have children. Well, now she's in her sixth month. And so nothing will be impossible with God. Remember, if parenting feels impossible, just remember, nothing is impossible with God. Uh, 
I think that this verse gets pulled out of scripture sometimes and used to defend some kind of weird things like nonsensical, you know, breaking the laws of physics kind of things. And that's not really what this is talking about. God is talking about real, important things, matters of actual life and death. And that's what we're talking about here, matters of life. How is this gift of life going to come to me? Nothing is impossible with God. If you arrive at a place in your life where you feel like continued life is impossible, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Sometimes I feel like being a parent or being a friend, being a child, being a a child of God, a worshiper, sometimes we come to a place, doesn't it just feel impossible? Like, how am I going to go on? How am I going to figure this out? How am I going to continue to forgive or continue to be a person of grace or continue to love this person who's driving me crazy? (laughs) Nothing is impossible with God. So Mary becomes this person who is able to not just be a mother, but be a mother to the Son of God, an impossible task. I was thinking this week about another Mary story, another time where she had to really be a mother. And it's in the Gospel of John, it's the first miracle that Jesus does. It's the first time in the Gospel of John where he begins his public ministry. You might remember the story. They're at a wedding, right? It's wedding season, and they go as a family to this wedding in Cana of Galilee. And um, a wedding is a big celebration. It goes on for many days. And the hosts encounter a really tragic faux pas because they run out of wine. Now, this is a big deal. They're going to be uh, really outcast in their society because they have not planned ahead for their guests. They have not been good hosts. And now the wedding is going to be ruined. And so Mary, Mary just comes up to Jesus and she says in that way, you know, that mothers do, where they're just saying, they're out of wine. And he says, woman, what is that to me? My time's not yet come. And Mary, being the mother, ignores him completely. And she goes up to the steward and says, listen to him and do whatever he tells you. Isn't that a mother for you? Just, she's not really telling you what to do. She's just laying it out there and kind of commanding you because she's just saying, you know, they're out of wine. Well, Jesus, you know, it's his mom, doesn't really have a choice here. And so he's called into action. And he And then we know the rest of the story, right? He goes to the steward and he says to fill these 12 enormous jugs and they become full of not water but wine. And now the wedding has more wine than they know what to do with and it's good wine and everybody is amazed. And it's because uh, Jesus is there to show God's abundant love, God's grace that just flows and flows and it's more than we could ever need. I wonder... Looking back on that story, I wonder if Mary regretted what she did there. I wonder if she ever had a moment where she thought, you know, if I hadn't said anything, no one ever would have known who he was. And I could just keep him all to myself. And he'd never be out there in this dangerous world. He'd never be unsafe. He'd be home with me, and he could take care of me in my old age, and I'd have a nice, comfortable life with my son always there with me. I wonder if she ever had a moment of of regret. I think I would have, but I don't think Mary did. I think because Mary knew. Mary knew who Jesus was. She knew because the angel told her. And she knew because the shepherds came and they told her that the angels had come and told them that he was the the child for all of them, the savior of the world. I think Mary knew because of her own faith in God and her own understanding of who God is, that God is the one who comes to set the captives free and to bind up the brokenhearted, to bring comfort to those who mourn and a garland of celebration. I think Mary knew, and so she had to give Jesus away. And that is an impossible task. That's impossible for a mother to love this child more than she loves herself and yet to give him away to the whole world. And yet nothing is impossible with God. I read a story this week, uh, a, a hopeful story, about another group of mothers 
who were up against an impossible task and decided it wasn't impossible and they were gonna do something about it. I saw this story in the Christian Century, which is a, a Christian periodical, it comes out every two weeks, and at the end of the year, they publish um, an article full of stories of hope, and this was one of their little vignettes. And there are a group of women in Chicago on the south side where it's very dangerous, where gun violence is very high. And this one woman in particular got tired of it, and she got angry. She got angry that there was senseless loss of life going on in her neighborhood around her. And so she got together with a couple of mom friends, I think two summers ago, and decided, you know, kids behave better when their mom is watching. So we're gonna go sit on the street corner, the most dangerous street corner in the Inglewood neighborhood of Chicago, and we're just gonna watch the neighborhood kids. So they put on hot pink t-shirts, they got out their folding chairs, and they just sat there. And before too long, they got out a folding table and they bought some hot dogs, and they started cooking hot dogs for people, whoever was there, and they bought some sidewalk chalk for the kids to play with. And now, they are out there every night in the summertime, and every weekend, year round. And they give out hugs, and they give out hot dogs, and um, they call themselves MASK, Mothers Against Senseless Killings. And they've recruited some men too, so now it's Mothers and Men Against sen Senseless Killings. And they've seen that, that just watching, just being present, has had this ripple effect in their community. And the local elementary school is performing better, and students are participating more. And they've had a toy drive at Christmas, and, and they've brought Santa to their neighborhood. And suddenly the community, in this one small part of this neighborhood is starting to feel like a community. And there's not been a single shooting there in two years on this most dangerous corner in a dangerous part of South Chicago. The leader, Tamara Manasa, um, she is a person of faith. And she has described these meetings on the, tent, on the corner to the, um, the old tent gatherings from the Old Testament, where God's people would come together in a tent for the sole purpose of meeting and receiving God. And she said, God works in mysterious ways. We know that. And so where better for God to meet us than a dangerous street corner on the south side of Chicago so that it can become a place of peace? I think when we say things are impossible, it means that we're just really afraid. We're just really afraid it's not going to work, or it's going to be too big and too overwhelming, or we're going to get to ourselves into a situation where we, where we don't like what we see, or we feel like we can't do it. And so our fear makes us think that this is impossible. Things like gun violence are so overwhelming it feels impossible. Raising a child is so overwhelming it feels impossible. Being a person of faith can be so overwhelming to have to constantly forgive, to constantly show grace, to constantly look for God in the other person. That can feel impossible. But Mary knew something that wouldn't be written down in the Bible for another hundred years that perfect love casts out fear. And Mary lived with perfect love. Her love of God is what empowered her to receive this news from the angel Gabriel and to allow herself to become the Christ bearer. This gift of love is what, um, what empowered her to love Jesus more than she loved herself and then to give him away. The gift of love is what empowers her to continue to follow, to be that disciple and that model for all of us. Perfect love casts out fear. And with perfect love and with God, nothing is impossible. So it feels like we've elevated Mary just a little bit, right? Um, but really, she is who we are called to be the Christ bearer, the one who receives the gift of Christ, who knows that gift of love, who uh, casts out the fear from our lives so that we can follow God and know that nothing is impossible, and we're called to bring that to the world, just as Mary did. So Mary, the mother of God, lived a life of impossibilities because God was with her, and so may we. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
We'll have uh, Jen come up and we will uh, sing a Christmas carol.